and five on the skip. So I can hold one, move one, that's not a problem. Just change the film into a technique. I can hold four, and I can move five. I can do my grades, mailing grades, one through four. I can hold three, move four, wherever I want to mobilize, right? So that's one way. What I have in the book is uh, one technique for all of the lumbar spine. And it's a technique that gaps each of the joints. So we've got, on the right, we've got one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, and five, one. So five right, and we have five left. So that's 10 possible joints. Again, we're still thinking. Keep this in mind. This is not the real world. Oh, I'm getting vertigo watching that. <laughs> um, we're still thinking this is a dysfunction patient. Okay, posture patient, we're going to do something else. <coughs> Arrangement, something very different. But this is a person, low back pain, and they have some stiffness in their hips, stiffness in their spine. We want to get things loose, we want to get things moving. Then we'll do some, maybe some strengthening and some training. But our, our thought at this point is stiffness. That's the model. Everybody with me? Nothing is out of alignment. No radiculopathy, no pins and needles, no weakness reflex changes, it's all local stuff. So this uh, particular approach I'm going to show you now is based upon uh, what we call the capsular pattern of the facet. So what you want to find is you've got 10 possibilities. You've got L1 through L5 on the right or L1 through L5 on the left um, could be stiff, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. But let's try to find the most restricted so what do you think it would look like if someone had stiffness between L4 and L5 on the left? That facet was stiff. When they forward bend, what happens? They deviate left, right? And they pick up something lower and they may come back to the right, or maybe they stay shifted off to the left if the whole side is stiff. But most often, they go left and then they come back. What do you think would be worse, side bending right or side bending left? putting the stiffness at L4, 5 on the left. What, which would challenge that joint more? Right side bending or left side bending? Right side bending, good. Which would challenge that joint more? Right rotation or left rotation? The gapping in the lumbar is like the gapping in the thoracic. We gap on the ipsilateral side. So when I rotate left, one gaps away from two, two gaps away from three. So if he's tight at four or five, it would be rotation left. What am I looking for? Pain and stiffness. More low reactivity stiffness, high reactivity pain, moderate reactivity, a little bit of ball. So that would be the capsular pattern. He goes forward and he goes off to the left, maybe comes back. Slide bending away, stiff and or painful, and rotation toward. We didn't really discuss extension. Just imagine this whole facet is just stiff. There's a there's fibrosis there. What would extension look like? He would deviate to which side? To the left or to the right? To the right. I would try to go back if the facets would close, and now I wouldn't be able to close on the left. I would go off to the right. So in extension, you deviate away. In flexion, you deviate towards. That's all part of the capsular pattern. So now you know something's going on. It looks capsular. Off to the left. Stiff right. Stiff in rotation. Now the idea is to try to find out which segment it is. That's, that's where our pivums come in. So what combination of our pivums would be restricted with L4-5 capsular tightness on the left? How about flexion? Flexion, is flexion normal? At flexion, the facets have to open or close. Open. open. You can't open on the left. Will that be normal? No. no. I'm going to find something in flexion. It's not going to feel right. It's not going to feel as free, as mobile, as it will be where he's got bilateral opening. So where he's got this facet capsular stiffness, I'm going to feel a little stiff there. Okay. What else? How about extension? Well, close. So maybe a little stiff in extension. Good. How about side bending to his right? Would that be, would that be stiff? Yeah, because it's on the left. So in order, if he's stiff on the left, he's not going to be able to side bend right. 
How about rotation? How about rotation right? Is that going to be a problem? Rotation right? The problem's on the left. I have to turn them over and do rotation left. You see? So you've got to have at least a 75-80% fit. So you're going to have active movements are going to point to a stiff capsule. You don't know where. You just know it's going to be left or right side. And then your pivots are going to point you to the segment. So again, the, um, the example here is L4-5 capsular stiffness on the left. So flexion, stiff, extension, stiff at that segment. Side bending to the opposite side to the right, stiff this way or this way, feel stiff, and then rotation not away, rotation towards, come over here this way, Driving down to four or five, straight to the bottom left, I do one, two, good, two, three, good, three, four, good, four, five, ooh, stiff, five, one, good. So between the active and the passive assessment, Got a pretty good sense as to where he's stiff. What what capsule is not working? Is not moving well. And then from there, I do my my treatment. And here's the treatment. There's a whole chapter on this. You have to be able to identify the correct facet. Turn towards me. So let's say that the facet will uh, put it on the right, so you can see better. Let's say that that's good. Let's put his tight capsule between three and four on the right. right. So, involve side up. It's going to help. I'm going to then come in from below, straight in the bottom leg. If it's at three, I want to come into the feather edge. So I'm going to come in from below. Five, check. Four, check. Three, just the very beginning. I feel it arrive. Put the foot down. I'm at 3, 4, local eye. And then I'm going to take him, I call this the lawnmower maneuver. I'm going to grab his upper arm. It's like pulling the lawnmower. I'm going to take him from above down. And again, I'm not facing perpendicular. I'm a little bit of an angle with my back foot using my left leg. I'm coming down until I just start. I can even put my middle, I can put my index finger at the segment above. So if he's 3-4, I can be at 2-3, so I get a little warning. When 2-3 starts to move, I know I'm almost there. There goes 2-3. 3-4, just got it. Just started to feel it. So feather edge. So feather edge flexion, feather edge rotation. Now I'm at 3-4. I'm going to gap the top side. I'm going to put my middle finger on the bottom of 4. I'm going to put my right thumb on the top of 3. I'm going to have a long lever and a short lever technique. Long lever would be, I'm going to come in without my fingers on the segment, just coming in through lever arms. I try to approximate, coming in here from below, coming in here from above. A lot of chiropractors, they thrust with long levers. Because when you have a long lever, you have a, you have a mechanical advantage, better leverage. You don't have to work very hard. So we're going to take advantage of that, but then we're going to come right through to a short lever. We're going to come right through our hand. I'm going to push on the spinous of three on the top. I'm going to pull on the spinous of four on the bottom. And I'm going to side bend him right, or side bend him left, rather. I'm going to open up the top facet. So he's flexed to that segment. He's rotated right to the feather edge. And now I side bend him away. And that top facet is gapping. What's happening at the intervertebral foramina at four or five? Let's say that he's got, let's say this is a person who's older. They have uh, lateral stenosis. It's not central stenosis in the canal. We'll talk about this next week. But let's say it's lateral stenosis in the lateral gutter or the lateral recess. And he's got some nerve pressure. What am I going to do to the intervertebral foramina when I gap that facet on the top? What happens to the foramen between four and between three and four here? It opens. So I decompress. So that may help decompress a nerve root compression if it's from a narrowing. So side bending. I'm going through the arms. I'm going through the pelvis. Okay. So now I have him side bend to the feather edge. Now I'm localized. Flexion. 
rotation right side bending left. If this is a woman, I would probably put a towel roll under the waist. Otherwise, I can't overcome the side bending to the top side. I'm trying to side bend to the bottom side. Rotate right, side bend left. At this point, I use the uh, Calton Bourne grades. Whenever I use traction, I think of Calton Bourne's grades one through three. This works better for me. So support piccolo traction, just to nullify grade one to the first stop, grade two, and I'm gonna ask you to do like 90% side bending, 10% rotation, because rotation is potentially, is potentially aggravating to the lumbar spine. You don't wanna overly rotate, because if the, if the set doesn't allow more, much rotation, the disc is gonna end up feeling the, taking the brunt of the uh, movement. You don't want that. You don't wanna break down the disc. So 90% side bend, 10% rotation, just a little bit. Grade two to the first stop. If he's low reactive and he's tight and I want to stretch him, side bend all the way and then rotate a little bit. Now I've got a nice stretch going. And I'm pushing with my thumb on the top, I'm pulling with my middle on the left, and I'm gapping the top joint. I'm really stretching that facet, that stiff facet joint. Just like a stiff shoulder. It would be the same as traction on the shoulder, lateral traction, or lateral traction on a stiff hip. It's traction on the facet joint. Okay? Now, you treat someone and um, they're doing better. So now it's right side bending. I'm sorry, right, right facet. So his left side bending is better, his right rotation is better. He's feeling less pain, he's got more motion. Good. So we're dealing with the dysfunction. So now you want to do a thrust. You've got to be really careful in the lumbar spine that you're not dealing with a derangement because. People have ruptured discs doing this. You've got to make sure that disc is, is strong and healthy. So no ridiculous symptoms, no numbness, no history of, like what uh, Nahid has it with the lateral shift. You've got to make sure this is just all stiffness and not derangement. And with the thrust, you're going to go into your rotation, side bending, and you've got to go to the end range. That's the difference. Muscle energy or um, the graded non-thrust mold is you go, to the, you go to the feather edge and then you go from there. With high velocity thrust, you've got to go to the end of the barrier all the way. You've got to lock them up as far as you can. You all right? Mm -hmm. You've got to really, really get, he's got a lot of muscle. I'm working through muscle, so I may not work. So I'm taking his pelvis toward me. I'm taking his shoulder away from me. I'm going to go long lever and short lever. Breathe in, and as he breathes out, I get some relaxation of muscle tone. I go a little further, a little further. Good. And breathe in again, and breathe out. Let it go. Let it go. Good. Just go limp. And then just like that. Just quick. <laughs> so your thrust is primarily through this arm. It's primarily here. Quick, a little bit here, just for counter support. And you get a cavitation, you get a gap, sometimes you get a pop. And it feels pretty good when it's done correctly. Right? <laughs> but it's short amplitude, high velocity. And they want us to start teaching this. Um, we can say that you do have exposure. I that's what he's doing. Just make sure you have the right patient. It's a dysfunction, not a derangement. Patient's able to relax, no contraindications. And they've done well with the mobilization. And you do what's called a pre manipulative hold. Go back. If someone, just before the thrust, you just hang out a little bit. And if you're here all the way and he says, don't go any further, don't go any further. If they say, man, that feels good, go more, then you're, you've got a green light. They express a little anxiety, a little apprehension. Stop. 